Hangar Video Hangouts. My name is Charles Carter, and I'll be your host this evening. I want to extend to you my gratitude for you watching Stun Hangar Video Hangouts. If you're watching this as a replay, I want you to know that I'm hosting these YouTube live streams every Monday and Friday evening starting at 6.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So please make a note of this so you can watch or be part of the live stream. Plus, we have an after party following the live stream, which is sometimes better than the live stream portion. You must be a registered Stunt Hanger Forum member to find the link to be part of the live stream and the following after party. Here at Stunt Hanger Video Hangouts, we talk about building and flying model airplanes, sport flying, competition flying, and what you've been doing lately. To join our conversation, if you are already a member of Stunt Hanger Forum, you can find the link if you scroll down to the section called At the Bench, which is right below in memory of our friends. Now, if you're not a member or if you're not logged into Stunt Hanger Forum, the At the Bench link will not appear. Now, if you're not a member, please register at stunhanger.com forward slash SMF. That's stunhanger.com forward slash SMF. That's smart men flying. That's courtesy of Jeff Riley. You must place a space between your real first and last name when you register. You must also use a valid email address or Sparky. The proprietor of Stun Hanger will not approve you. Now, if you're inclined to not come in, just enjoy watching us on YouTube. Wonderful. Fantastic. You can any of your questions or comments in the chat box right over here during the live stream. And I'll do my best to make your comments or questions a part of the show. And I understand sometimes I can't get a word in myself. So be patient. And I will ask our illustrious panel your question or state your comments. And by the way, you only can do this during a live stream. So like I said earlier, I host these YouTube live streams every Monday and Friday evening, starting at 6.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, if you find the Stun Hanger video hangouts that I host or the many building videos, contest coverage videos that Sparky does on this platform, informative and enjoyable, please hit that thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, subscribe, share the videos, comments on the videos, help the Stun Hanger YouTube channel grow. Please consider joining Stun Hanger's YouTube channel memberships, which started just $4.99 a month, which is less than 17 cents a day. And by the way, I'm a member. I have the $4.99 come out of my own checking account. It's been coming out of my account for the last three years and 10 months and counting. So you can do that. Now, if you uh, don't want to do the monthly subscription, you can do what's called the super chat, which is right below the chat box right over here. It's a big dollar sign. Click on that and it'll take you to a uh, place where you can put in your information to donate. And if you're watching uh, this this show as a replay, uh, the super thanks, excuse me, the super chat is not available. Go to the super thanks. Click on those three dots below the video here and uh, a, a menu will pop up and select super thanks and you can donate uh, that way. Please uh, donate, you know, and hopefully your donations are in line with what you're receiving and I suspect you receiving a lot. I mean, we have uh, Sparky, who's built over 500 airplanes. I mean, you do 500, you do, you do something 500 times, no matter what it is, you're going to be pretty good at it. So you're going to get some really good information. And in our, our gallery, we have, we have some very talented people that are in our gallery. You know, we, this hobby has been around for a long time. And some of these people have been doing it for 50, 60 years. So great information. And, um, I think it's a steal, you know, so please donate. I'm doing it, so I'm not asking you to do something I'm not willing to do myself, okay? My money is precious to me, too. So please uh, open your wallets and, and, and donate. Now, this is Sparky's YouTube channel, so I'm, I'm not uh, uh, asking you something that Sparky doesn't know about already, you know, and doing this is Sparky's thing. I'm actually just hosting this show, and... Uh, so if you have any questions, the best way to reach me, or if you have any comments, the best way to reach me would be to go to my own YouTube channel, which is called Flying Control Line Stunt. That's Flying Control Line Stunt. That's the name of my YouTube channel. And if you go there, please uh, check out the, uh, 
the 2019 AMA National Championship video, which Sparky shot with his video camera of me flying his beautiful and light Junar XL. It was orange back then, and now it's white with orange trim. If you check the if you check out the video, if you have any comments or questions, because that is my YouTube channel, I'll get a notification on my phone, so I'll be able to respond to you quickly. If you um, nothing wrong with commenting on Sparky's YouTube channel, but I don't check the comments, and I sometimes I don't go into the Stun Hanger forum often enough. So it'd be you might be waiting a while to hear back from me, but if you do it the way I suggest, I'll respond to you immediately as soon as I can. All right, I want to thank you for your past, your present, and future support. I mean, you are making it happen. Please keep the conversations family room friendly. In other words, please don't use words to do things you wouldn't say or do around your own children or grandchildren. Now, without any further ado, I'm now going to post the link. Uh, let me see if I have that link in the uh, loaded up here. Uh, I think I already posted the link. Yeah, excellent. So let me uh, go to what I call the... Uh, control panel and I will uh, make some changes there and I get a chance to watch what's going on on my several screens here I have see who's uh, coming in the chat box that's how I do everything here is through these uh, different screens let me get there right now and let's see here all right looks like we are streaming we have five concurrent viewers five likes wow 100% Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Right out the gate. And then Daniel Berry Sports Highlights says, Happy Friday, everyone. Absolutely. Happy Friday. And then Gary Sinclair, who's our first um, member of our YouTube channel in there. I can tell the members by the moniker next to the name. And Gary actually is not only is he a member of our YouTube channel, he's actually a monitor and of the chat box as well. He says, hi, everyone. Like provided. Thank you very much. So that's all set up. Let me just do a little editing here real quick while I'm waiting for people to come in the gallery. Uh, let me just, uh, just bear with me. But I did go out flying this week. I actually had a, I think I went out flying three times, twice with Joe and once by myself, flying my stunt trainer. Uh, that's all I've been flying is just that stunt trainer, actually, which... Uh, let me see here. Uh, I don't know. Let me just click on that. All right, cool. Great. All right. And uh, turn that on. Awesome. Great. All right. Fantastic. So I took out my stunt trainer today. And um, and I think I flew, flew yesterday, Thursday. And I believe I flew Tuesday. So three days. Had some beautiful weather out here, and um, wind came up in the afternoon like usual. Around one or so, it gets pretty windy. Uh, and the sun trainer, um, I have a little bit of flexing in the uh, push rod. It's a wire push rod, and it, it flexes. So it's. I wish it was a little bit more uh, stout for the wind. When it, when the wind comes up, it's it's a little bit difficult to uh, to pull out in the bottom of the maneuvers because the wind is really pushing against that push rod and I'm having to fight against it. Um, so there's flexing and that, that, but, but when it's really nice weather, man, that thing is uh, flying pretty good. It has a little bit of a uh, hunting a little bit, but it's not that bad. It's uh, really, uh, really enjoying it. Matter of fact, uh, next weekend is the fly in at Whittier and Arrows. And I'm, I'm believing I'm just going to take the stunt trainer. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before, but you know, uh, I've been flying these ARFs at contests and ARFs don't, you don't get any appearance points, maybe an arc. Maybe if you refinish it, do a great job, change your control system. Uh, maybe in some cases they might give you 10 points. They know that's a lot of work in finishing um, even an arc. Uh, that's an arc is a plane that's everything is built, but you have to assemble it and, and it's not, doesn't have a finish. So it's, I call it to the nude where there's no tissue, no Monaco, no film. And you have to uh, do a lot of work to make it look nice. Work to make it look nice. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hey, Lynn, how you doing, hey, man? man? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. You? Good. We have a loop. Good. We have a loop. You might have a tab we open. Might have a tab open. Okay, hang on. Just mute it, and you'll be cool. 
Oh, you didn't have to go away. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, look forward to Lynn getting back in here with us, and we can uh, start cooking with gas. And let's see what else has been going on. Uh, lots been going on, but for some reason it escapes me. Uh, just seeing my reflection in this, in this show, I lose my mind a little bit sometimes. But uh, oh, here we go. Hey, Lynn, welcome back, Lynn. Better? Yes. Okay. Hi, Naomi. How you doing? Uh, you guys been okay. doing any flying, or you guys been doing any building? Building, building. All right. I've been flying, but I uh, haven't gone out yet. All right. Well, get after it, Naomi. You gotta get after it. I know. I I just I I can't. What I can't, what can I tell you, Charles? I have other things that I do besides flying. <laughs> I understand that. I have so yeah. much going on too. I totally get it. You know. I yeah. I do. I, and uh, the weather's I, just starting to get nice, but not every day. Right, right, yeah. And we still get a lot of windy, really, like, really crazy windy days. Like, it's not fun to fly in that much wind. No, it isn't. And I was just talking about how my stunt trainer, the push rod is a wire, and it 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 is flexing. So when the wind is pushing it, I feel that, and it's just a resistance that I'm having to fight the plane. So it's it's not not fun in, in the wind. And I, no. I realized that today. I thought, I was thinking that this, uh, this stunt trainer that I have would help me fly in the wind. I was thinking initially, this plane, if I was to crash it, no big deal. Can you get another one up in the air and fly it? And I thought it would help me with the wind, but it was getting windy today. And I realized, nope, that's not going to be a candidate for flying in the wind but wouldn't it be nice to have a plane that you can take out in the wind and fly in the wind you know and if something happens yeah you know, there are can... there are airplanes that will work for you that way though charles you just have to find one yeah because you know sometimes you can win a contest just because you can fly better in the wind than your competitors that's right that's a good it's a good way to do it go out and fly in just about anything and you you'd be surprised how how much your flying improves Hey, right, Gary. Hey, Gary. Gary. Gary Sinclair is in the house. Oh. Hey, Gary. I'm so sorry I haven't gotten back to you, and uh, uh, that's all right. You know, I, I I'm just hurt myself. You know that. So I know it's no big deal. I'm not not shorting you. I'm just like, yeah, you know. yeah. But by, by the way, Gary's very good with with color schemes and stuff. He really is uh, really talented, and I've enlisted him to. Um, I don't know if I'm not everyone's into Formula One, but uh, Lewis Hamilton's leaving Mercedes going to Ferrari. And so now I'm going to be next year, I'm going to be a big Ferrari fan. And I was entertaining my next plane to look like a Ferrari or at least colors like a Ferrari with the, with the Ferrari, you know. Um, that's awesome. You know, so that's why I was asking him for that. But I haven't provided him a good picture of a Ferrari Formula One car. So. OK, but that's what I was thinking. You know, so awesome. you should try some of those windy side scoops. I know, I know. Yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I kind of like them. Yeah, not I've only are they them nice, Gary. New... Go ahead, What's that? No, Go I ahead, said I, got, I have them on my new plane. They look amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm not only looking about aesthetically, but just the stiffness. I mean, that's what my yeah. biggest, my biggest attraction or, or allurement to scoops is that structural strength you get. Oh, yeah, the fuselage is much stronger, I think. Yeah, that's that's the reason why I'd want to do it. Yeah, that's cool. Good yeah. stuff. I can tell you, Charles, after watching Len uh, with building a full-body airplane with scoops and everything else, I can totally understand why I'm happy to stick to building profile models. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah well in time when that gets to be uh, easy and, and no big deal you'll want something more challenging you know i know i know but it's sort of like the wind thing it's like you know like i have planes that fly better in the wind but they tend to be like to get the power to cut through the wind you tend to have to run them a little too fast 
for me to comfortably fly or try to fly any kind of precision because I don't have time to think about what I'm doing. I'm going just too fast. Like my lap speed is just right. too fast. No time to think. It's just, yeah. and then when you're going into the wind, your lines are just like right out there. Yeah. Like you just, oh. yeah, they're, they're just bowed out. So, so much. It's like, you're really fighting and fighting just to get it around. Right. I totally understand that. And, uh, but you'd be surprised how just by slowing the plane down, you know, uh, it actually you do better in the wind, slowing the engine down a little bit. I learned that. I didn't know that. I was I was very fortunate to have a, a, a gentleman, Marshall Palmer, who was an expert pilot out here. He was he was launching me <clears throat> at a contest and I was reaching to speed the needle up thinking I need more power. And he said, no, Charles, don't 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 do that. Slow the motor down a little bit. I have it a little bit rich. And uh, he was right. I mean, um, it's something, you know, it's not intuitive that we would think. I mean, as the things we did as kids, some things we did, <clears throat> they were wrong. You know, you know, even like when we when we were kids, right, we would point the plane out when we we're going to take off, right? That's just something we'd always do. But at a contest, I don't point the plane out because you want a really smooth takeoff. If you point the plane right. out, it's going to leap in the air because when it gets to the end of the lines, it has no place to go but up. So it jumps up. And Plus, if you point it out, it does the waggle as soon as you let go of it. Right, and that that doesn't look good aesthetically. You're not going to get. You might not get forty points for your takeoff and level flight. You might not. You might not get thirty either. <laughs> yeah, but that's something we I did as a kid. I pointed the plane out and speed the motor up when it was windy, and uh, they're all that's intuitively incorrect, in my opinion. Yeah. Looks like. Uh, who joined this next? I didn't know who I have three more people and I which I appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, I imagine it's Mark Gerber might have came in next. Hey Mark, and then I'll get you uh Bob Whitling and Sparky. Hey Mark, what you been up to? Oh, lots of stuff. Oh, good. You have lots of things to share with us? Oh yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> I have fixed so you can share. Hey Sparky, how you doing? All right. And Bob Whitley, how are you doing, Bob? Very good. Yourself? Doing well. Doing well. Get that snow out of there. Winter's over. That's why we're not doing any flying right now around here. Wow. I'm supposed to get under two to four inches tonight. So. <laughs> wow. Man, that's hard to believe. But that's Colorado for you, right? Enjoy warm California while you can, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, so we I've got been... a shot of it a couple of days ago, and today it's just uh, shirt sleeve weather and uh, really warm. I think it'll be warm next week again. We're supposed to get a warming trend. We'll be back to spring, but we're having a little late winter right now. So anyway, I'm waiting on the fuselage formers to come back from laser cutting for my bear cat. So I'm putting a bigger tank in, in my P40 because it seems like the motor, as it gets better worn in, it uses more fuel. And I had a heck of a time getting through the pattern at uh, Las Vegas. And I'd like to take it to Brodax, which is even lower elevation. So that's what I've been doing this week. I, I took the old tank out of it and I designed a bigger one. This is almost half an ounce more capacity. Nice. And then I laid it out on 10. And I got this bending jig that I uh, made when I built my Bearcat. Oh, very nice. I like that. that very genius. Works out really well. I got that out of uh, Stunt News in 26, 2013. There's a really good article in there about how to bend 10 if you're going to make a tank or anything else. Wow. So, I like that. I think you can look that up on uh, Pampa in the Pampa file. So that's the October 2013. Let me make a note of yeah, that. Yeah, September, October 2013. Make a note of that. That's pretty cool. And then these these are little benders that I made to bend the end caps. Oh, uh, wow. 
basically two little pieces of sheet, um, actually bar steel with bolts through them. And you, you know, slide the end onto the pin and tighten the bolts up and then you can bend it, you know, right up. Al Ravy does this. That's where I got this idea. So I've made a bunch of those to bend the end caps. Very nice. Um, this is a really handy tool. Yeah, um, I have one of those, and so does that uh, Bob Whitley. It's a punch, and you know, you can go all the way from you know, what the smallest one is almost down to a 16th, I think. And then here's the way it works, you know, with the male piece and the female. And you, it's got a little pin in the end of each one. So you just make a little dimple in the sheet and settle that pin into that dimple. And then you got it positioned exactly where you want it. Just squeeze and you get these really nice round holes. Very nice. And I also figured out I can make small washers with it. If I drill like oh. a 16th hole and then punch out like a 532nd diameter using that hole as the center, I come up with a little washer. So if you want to do your tailwheel washer or some other small, uh, you might be able to do a larger one, if, but you'd have to drill it out after you punch it. Hey, that's so, very genius. Very ingenious. I never, I never thought to use that tool as to make washers. I just another thing that's really day, good to do for that. And it works out really well. So Another here's thing the thing that's really good for Mark is uh, stainless steel hose clamps for muffler mounts. Those uh, are really a bear to drill, but they punch out like nothing. It takes a bit of effort, but makes a nice hole. Okay. So here's the tank, and it fits. So the pipe even comes up the right spot. So I was pretty happy with that. I bet. All I got to do is put it all back together. So <laughs> very, very nice. And I've also been fixing my uh, Ryan. I dinged one of the wheel pants down at uh, VSC. And I knocked out a big chip out of the front here. And uh, so I filled it back in with uh, that blue stuff that Howard doesn't like. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'm getting ready to. Start painting these. I have masked it off this afternoon. And then I went to the mailbox and here's what I found. So I got all my fuselage formers now. Nice. For the Bearcat. And I'm ready to start working on the fuselage. So very nice. That's what I've been up to. You've been busy. Yeah, and it's uh neat having that that punch you have. My my dad, um, had a had uh, one of those um and so i didn't have to go buy it i had it and uh it's it's, an, it's just a neat reminder of him uh well, you could punch tank holes with an awl or trying to drill sheet steel is really bad news i mean you, it's really hard to get a clean hole by drilling on something thin <laughs> yeah but with that punch you get really nice holes and absolutely well, obviously you couldn't do any flying. I saw your uh, porch there with all the snow. But... <laughs> Actually, last week was really was really good. Last weekend, uh, I didn't get out, but the guys were flying down in Arvada. Jerry Higgins and Keith Russell. I think they were out last week ago, yesterday, and a week ago tomorrow. They were out last weekend, too. But then the weather started to deteriorate during the week, and we got snow the other night. And we're supposed to get more tonight, so. Well, this too shall pass. Hopefully this weather will will be into a uh, full bore spring. You won't worry about no snow. Well, the next problem is going to be wind. Uh, usually sometime in mid-May it settles down and you get really nice calm days. But You going to Brodeck, Mark? Yep. We'll see you there, Sparky. Oh, yeah. Very good. Let me see uh, what Bob Whitley's been up to. Well, we had the 100th anniversary for the Air Force, the big dinner last Saturday night, and that was fantastic. It was just great seeing old friends, and we had uh, around 280 or so at it. 
and it was food was great friendship was great it was terrific you want i can try and show you a little picture yeah i don't know how to bring it up off the photo album but i'll just bring it up off my phone and I'll just change camera here. And let's see there. Oh, very good. There's all right. That's me and my wife at it. And awesome. I'm my old military mess kit, and you notice it still fits. <laughs> very good, man. That's uh not not everybody can say that. That's yeah. that's pretty impressive, man. That is Keeping your weight down, that's not easy as you get older. That's fantastic. Well, it's shifted down a little bit. My arms aren't uh, nearly what they used to be, and my belly's a little bit more, but uh, nothing serious. Good. Hey, uh, yeah, we've had uh, really howling winds here and everything all week and a bit of snow and stuff, but it calmed down today, and it's supposed to be so-so on the weekend. Not good enough for really for flying models, I don't think, but uh, I'm booked jam solid tomorrow and Sunday for – making it up. I've got three or four new students to get up in the sky. So a couple of checkouts to do. So it's super busy. So I'm not going to be on that long. All right. Uh, Sparky, Sparky, I want to thank you for something. Yeah. Yeah. On your videos, you've got that sound deadening when you fire up your tools and stuff. Yeah. And that is really nice. I wish all of these YouTubers would do that. Yeah, it's nice. It is pretty cool. We you know that. Yeah, so I uh, uh, got to get back after uh, after models. Hopefully next weekend it'll be nice enough to get out and do some, put a handle on my hand and go around and try and avoid uh, contacting terra firma in the vertical mode. But uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Nothing too All much. Right. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Let me catch up on the chat box. Um, Marcel Legrand. Says, hi, Charles, and everyone here at Stunt School. I just rebuilding my twin for the third time now. Uh, I twins are, aren't easy, something like that. And then um, this person here, um, how do I say this handle? Um, this is obviously another Formula One fan. It says, uh, they said, yeah, Lewis Hamilton, 44. Hell yeah. Absolutely. I, I'm with you. What's your name? Let me see. Your handle is uh, Get Slide, I think, is what it's saying. I got it. Oh, that's Rick Campbell. <laughs> that's Rick Campbell? All yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait till uh, 2025. I just I just can't wait. I'm so excited about 2025. Uh, Tony Dallas, who is a member of our YouTube channel, our second member that's in the chat box. Thank you very much, Tony, for your support, financially uh, supporting us. Thank you. He says, hi, y'all. Like Gibbon still repairing the trophy trainer that crashed a few weeks ago, uh, I slammed into the ground doing a wing over. Oh, man. So much fun putting it back together. Wow. You know, I've never crashed doing a wing over. I mean, he really was... Uh, trying to get low and uh, i commend you for that <laughs> uh -huh. that is amazing and then tony dallas goes on to say i bet it would be easier to build a new wing yeah um yeah sometimes it might be easier to build a new wing i don't know uh, and then um this other handle oh the handle is go for it painting says hello thank you very much so right now we have 21 uh, viewers and 16 likes. Appreciate those 16 likes, but if you have not smashed that like button, please hit that. That helps the analytics. doesn't cost you anything. And if you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and select all so that whether Sparky or myself comes on, you'll be notified and you'll be able to catch the live streams. And don't forget the super chats and the super thanks if you're watching this as a replay, hit the three dots, click on that, and um, it'll direct you to how you can donate and uh, support us. Thank you very much. Sparky, what's going on with you? I'm working on my landing gear. This is a, a super light set of landing gear. 
Balsa wood. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, but it'll be carbon. This is the plug. I've got to... Uh, I, I built it today, the last video on here. And uh, it took an hour and 40 minutes to get it built. And it's taken three hours to finish so far. So I've got to put another coat of Z epoxy on it and get it sanded smooth. And then I'll prime it with some primer and shoot them black, fix any of the imperfections. And then I'll take that uh, Alumicast molding stuff and build a two piece mold so that I could turn it into carbon fiber. Nice. A lot of work goes into this stuff. But right. it's, it's, it's the lightest landing gear I've ever made right now. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't It'll be good anything. for one landing, Sparky. <laughs> yeah, probably not even good for one landing because I don't think it'd make out make it for the takeoff. I uh I set up my disc sander to sand half the angle so that this joint here is all the joints are really good, you know. I think it was 32 and a half degrees. Yeah, that's what it was. 32 and a half degrees each piece, and they butt jointed together, but it wouldn't last long. <laughs> but by doing this, I got to thinking, you know, I bet you could build something like this and put pl laminate plywood over it, and it would hold up. But how heavy would it be? Wood. Right. We'll get that made up. I'll put together. Hey, Sparky, you want Wendy's off. mold too? I've got it here. I'll send it to you if you want it. Yes, please. All right, I will. I'll, I'll PM you, and you can give me your address or whatever, and I'll just, I'll just mail it out to you. All righty. You can have it. You can have it. I'm not going to use it. Anything else that you're not going to use, send it along. <laughs> in the carbon area. I think that's the last mold I have. Is it a two-piece mold? It's actually one piece. There might have been a second piece, but I don't have it if there was. It was just the flat top piece I don't have. The actual mold I have. I'll show you what I got. I'll, I'll go get it. It looks just like yeah, it's this. like right? that. Yeah, I'm going to get it for you. Hang on. Okay. He did. He did flat gear. These gear here are airfoiled, but I wouldn't mind having it. So, so the gear that I'm going to make, it's a two-piece mold. You know, the bottom piece will look something similar to this. And then the cap will go on top and force, you know, force all the extra resin out of it. And it'll be airfoiled. That's why all this work. <laughs> Because I got a flat gear that I made the first round. Of course, it's this is uh, just primed, but this is carbon a carbon gear. This was on Viper Eight. Very nice. Light, but. You know, just not enough height there for a big motor airplane. So I I made them a little wider and a little taller. Oh, cool. Yeah. Then I got that. I got this flat plate mold. And then, oh, I got something nobody does. All right. This mold here is what I came up for profile. So when you lay this up, you lay it up all the way up and around this and it'll harden. And then when you're done, you know, pop it out of the mold, you cut it in half and file it off. So you just have this half here. Right, I see you bolt this to the You bolt this to each side of the, you know, the fuselage. That's awesome. I could have made that a little narrower, but Just a little, it wastes a little bit of carbon, you know, an extra inch and a half. It's all right. But I'll make a few of those. Let's see what 
make uh, Len big. All yeah. right, one second. Um, hang on, uh, replace. There we go. There we go. Hey, Len, it's thanks. Got the for... indentations in it for the bolt for the bolt oh, yeah. mounts and oh, yeah. the whole bit. Yeah, I'd like to have that. All right, I will send it to you, Sparky. What's that? If you just of? PM me your address tomorrow morning or something, I'll I'll ship it out to you. What's that made out of? Len, did you hear me? It's a nice mold. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a nice shape. Len, it's got a lot of glue on the front of it, but that's no big deal. You got your ears on? What's it made out of? I don't know. I'm not sure what this stuff is. It looks is like it some sort of a phenolic or something. I don't know what it is. Not sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I I honestly do not. It's not wood, so I don't know what the heck it is. Might even be marble or something. I don't know. It's it weird. looks like granite. Or it could be marble. It's almost like a stone type affair. Yeah, that'll work. Actually, yeah. you know, it might be quartz, which the uh, yeah, it might be something like that because you can machine that with uh, regular woodworking carbide tools. Quartz, yeah, it might be quartz. It's not as heavy as marble would be. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Yeah, it might actually be quartz. Could could but be it's a nice that, mold. Uh, so. Could be that countertop material, that faux countertop. Yeah, that, that's what I think it is. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Is the uh, man-made, uh, you know, resin quartz where they just take all the the grindings and uh, add resin to it. Oh, and you, you we use it for countertops, and you can mill it like uh, like nothing. Are those holes all the way through it? it looks like it's three inside? pieces. There's a there's a top piece, and then two side pieces that go down. Oh, no, pins. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, I'll I'll send you okay. my address. All right, thanks, Sparky. Thank I'll you. send it out to you. I'd never thought of using that material for molds or something. Heck, you could get the scraps of it for nothing from any cabinet shop or countertop shop. Nobody gives nothing for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it depends who you know. You may have given it in the past when it's favors returned. Yep. Let me say hi to Tom Knight. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Good, hey, Carl. How are you? Doing well. I went flying uh, three times this week, so had a good week. Yeah, we got out, uh, Len and I and Brad LaPointe, we got out a couple times this week, too. Hey, good. That's, Very that's good. Nice, really nice weather, too. So what, what did you fly this week? Uh, oh, God, what did I fly? Oh, my, my one I called the what's it. <laughs> On the what's it? Okay. Yeah. And actually, Len really thought it was a nice airplane. Just a profile or built up? No, it's a profile. And what, what do you use for power in that plane? Uh, LA-46. Oh, it's just a nice size airplane. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a fairly big airplane. I was laughing. I run over the lens today. I got a, an engine that came in the mail today that I bought. You going to show it to us? Yeah, it's um, it's a Merco. Hey, <laughs> a Merco forty. A Merco forty. I have one of those. Okay, and this is a fairly new one. This is um, I've never seen one, and neither has Len. But um, there's what you're looking at right there. Yeah, Merco, Merco forty. Yeah, mine is. is... One of those? Yeah, but my my the my crankcase is not dark. It's all you know the regular. Yeah. silver grayish color but yeah it's uh you know i was i was out i was out at um a lake bed out in um little rock nice yeah the muffler is a little bit heavy no not this one uh less than two ounces that's still kind of heavy though well the, the whole engine is about an ounce and a half lighter than an la 40 set all right well that's uh, good uh, yeah, Lynn and I, well, and that's, that's with this big honking carburetor on the front of it. Once that's I get good. that off it, it'll probably be a good ounce later, I would think. 
I hope yours is better than mine. Mine was a little bit disappointing. It did not. I mean, it, it's powerful enough, but it's less powerful than the other engines of comparable size. You know, like an FP40 was more powerful than my Merco 40. But the Merco 40 um, stock, you know, what, what intrigued me was I was at this lake bed and there was this gentleman flying a um, scimitar. It's a profile with twin rudders. And um, I hadn't been to a contest before. Or I didn't know the pattern or anything. I just happened to be at the same place this other guy was at. And I was observing him, watch, watching him. And what, what intrigued me was when he started his motor up, when he started needling it, I was thinking he needs to needle that thing more in, you know, to get that motor going faster. But he kept it in a very rich four cycle. And I'm thinking, man, he's not going to be able to do anything with that engine run. Takes off. And then he does the full pattern. The motor came on and off perfectly. And I was like, oh, man, I got to get me a Merco. It's a Merco 35. And so I um, never did get a Merco 35. But I thought, well, it's probably just as good as the Merco 40. But the Merco 40 never ran like that Merco 35 did. So, you know, I still have it. It's a, it's not a bad motor. I just not as powerful as I like it to be. It's kind of like, you know, your Double Star 61 it's not as powerful as the Super Tiger 60, you know, but there's still a good motor. I have uh, I have three Merco 35s, and I have a Merco 29, the ones with the orange head. Yeah, I'll get you, Sparky, one second. What is Sparky got there? Some Mercos? Yeah. 61. Those are Merco what? 60s or 49s? 61 to 49. Very nice. I thought I had a 40, but all, I, all I have is a 49. Those are single glow plugs or double? These are singles. The double I sent to... Uh, Jonathan Caradas. Yeah. Very cool. These engines here kind of froze up. I mean, I'm sure that if I worked with them, you know, put some... Put some <clears throat> fuel in it, put a prop on it, I work it back and forth and... They've been sitting forever. Hey, can I have some peanuts there, Sparky? I just saw those planters there. <laughs> there you go, Len. There's your Merco 61. Ask, ask him if he wants to sell it. Yeah, well, sure. What do you give me for it? Hey, Len. Hey, Len. You're, you're muted, think, Len. <laughs> what do you want for it? Whatever you, whatever, what do you want to give me for it? What do you think it's worth? Kind of looks like it has some Put it flyer the screen marks again. on it. Let me look at it. It's a newer one with a single, single plug, right? Yeah. Oh, and that's a light case too. So that's, that's a good deal. It's had, this has had some plier marks on here. I didn't do that, but. Uh oh, so 50 it? bucks as is. How much? 50 as is. Yeah. No Venturi on it. No uh, spray bar. Uh, we can fix that up, Lenny. Oh, yeah, oh, Tom. Right. Tom, and I, you have a lathe, right, Tom? Yeah. yeah. Tom makes Venturis and all kinds of good little doodads. Yeah. Yeah, that's no problem. I'll take 50 bucks for it. Very all cool. Right. I, I will send you a money order, and uh, I'll send you... Tomorrow, I'll send you my uh, address, too. Okay. Very cool. Hey, Lynn, I, got a, good, Sparky. Uh, I, uh, I got a 49, too, with a carburetor on it. Anybody's interested in that. How much for it? What is it again, Sparky? What's it worth? <laughs> <laughs> 25 bucks. 25. Got 25. 25 going, got 25. <laughs> Uh-oh, he's not answering. <laughs> Someone else raise your paddle. Yeah. We got 25 going, 25 going, 25 going. <laughs> <laughs> give me give me 40 bucks for this one. Sold. <laughs> Sold. All right. Sold. Guy with the hat on and the sweater. All right. Now, I've got to send you down some money for the McCoy, too, eh? McCoy. Oh, you're the one getting the McCoy? Yeah. yeah he's getting the McCoy. That's right. I haven't put it together yet, but yeah. 
Why don't you ship them all up together to, to land and uh, save a whole bunch of that stupid cross-border postage? Yeah, I'd do that. Send all three motors and we'll just send you a, a money order for it. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, send me a money order. All right, we'll do that. Or I can and deliver send me your Brodax. Address. So, we, yeah, well, either that or we can get them from Brodax. What do you want to do, Tom? I don't care. No matter who. Just take them to Brodax, Sparky, and give them to Stuart. He'll bring them home, and I'll and I'll send the money order, and I'll send you the money order anyway. Okay, I got a bunch of stuff I'm taking to Brodax, and I'm looking Perfect. for my primer bottle, and it seems to have disappeared off the table here, and I'm going to need that to fly. Just go and get some more visine and uh, pour out the liquid like you did when uh, we went to uh, what store was that we went to? We went to some was it Walmart? Yeah. Let me see if I can. I want to see if I can break this thing loose. I don't want to sell you any junk. You know, one of the best Mercos uh, I've ever seen run, John Wright. He has a Merco 61 that's been bored out to 65. And that's um, uh, Frank Bowman, you know, who makes uh, rings. He actually used to work on motors. And he took a Merco 61 and bored it out and put a 65 size piston in there. And that is one sweet motor. I'm sure uh, Stephen Michella has launched that plane and he can vouch for what I'm saying. That is a very nice Merco. And we have uh, warriors and overcomers in the house here in the chat box and says, Sparky, yeah. I work for a cabinet custom woodworking company. My boss also owns a countertop shop and they are all the, all the time giving out large scrap pieces of quartz and solid surface materials. Cool. Send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> And he goes on to say, a, a lot of the countertop shops will give their larger scrap pieces away so they don't have to deal with getting rid of them in the trash. Wow. Keep that in <laughs> mind. You know, you this can get a nice ring engine. Not Sparky? This Merco is a ring engine. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, Charles, I'd mentioned. Uh years ago too to people just go by a cabinet past the cabinet shop and you know when i worked in them anybody was welcome to go into the bin and just grab whatever they wanted for scraps of wood because it all goes in the garbage anyway so uh you know like my leftover maple and stuff i just cut it up into engine bearers and give it away at our contests that sort of nice. stuff so uh uh you know we're we're, we're control liners we're cheap just go, that. go out and ask. And you know what really works good? When you're in there visiting, let them know what you're doing. Bring an airplane along. Have a good chat okay. with them. And see if you can get some donations for your local contest. That's what I do. And they're very generous. Nice. I'll keep that yeah, in mind. Definitely. Run oil in there, Sparky. That'll help. This uh, motor hasn't had anything in it in probably 30 years. There we go. There it goes. Just keep pumping the oil to it. It'll turn over. I sold that one to Jonathan Karatis. Uh, I, I guess he's never run it yet. <laughs> Not yet. There we go. I didn't put much of a prop on it. I must have like three Mercos. I think I have, uh, but most of mine are the heavy case. They don't have the, um, they're kind of heavy. They're big dogs. Anyone ever run the Russian MDSs? I had I got about yet. three of them. They run okay, Sparky? Yeah. I've got a 40 and a 48, and I forget what the heck the other one is. The 49, MBBS 49. Is it 49? Yeah. I've actually got a brand new, a small one, an 18 MBS. 
So we got a correction from Philip Bailey. He said, we're not cheap. We're just thrifty. <laughs> Frugal. Yeah, it's another way. It's another way of saying it. Uh, Warriors and Overcomers says, I use scrap pieces of solid surfaces as weight to laminate balsa together or have a as a weight when gluing, gluing parts together. That helps keep everything good and flat. That's a good idea. What's he use? He used scraps. I guess scraps of those solid surfaces. Uh, I guess like what we talking about, the countertops, that kind of stuff. I use server weights. I got uh, six big server weights to go on the bottom of a server. You mind not... showing this one for our audience, uh, Sparky? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure I've seen it, but I don't remember it. Yeah, if I wouldn't have come across that sheet of glass, I would have been using uh, solid surface granite or something for a, for a building table. I think these are about four or five pounds a piece. Oh, wow. I got six of them. You said they're for servos? Servers. You know, oh, that servers. Server, not servos. Computers. Servers. The big cabinets, yeah. you go in the bottom to keep them from tipping over. Nice. You know, um, I uh, when a fluorescent light with those tubes, when they go bad, I just take the uh, ballast out of them, and those are kind of heavy. I use those for weights, for glue up. I got to caution you about that, Charles, though. I had uh, one of those ballasts uh, in the ceiling start leaking, and it leaked down and buggered up a couple of rifles. Got onto them. Uh, uh, that ballast, when it starts to leak, it's highly corrosive. I bet. Yeah, I... Uh... They're not overhead. They're they're basically on my bench, and I right. have a, I have them wrapped in foam, so they don't booger up any balsa wood. And I, um, yeah, but I keep an eye out for them leaking. But yeah, I, when I see them in the dumpster, I just take it out the ballast. They're just good solid weight. There we go. Yeah. We got, got the cover. That's awesome. Yep. Hey Sparky. Yeah. You did you sell that retro seventy eight? Yes. Okay. I shipped just wondered. it today. Okay. Which one are you working on there, Sparky? This is the 49. 61. No, this is oh, the 49. I'm working on mine, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Don't worry about his. He doesn't care. That sounds good. <laughs> oh, look at that, man. <laughs> All right. All right. That turns over good. I don't know if I got any more left of Merc. I had a whole bunch of them. Probably had 10 of them. That's awesome. Yeah, send me the money, Len. I need the money to go to uh, Brodax. Not a problem. Yeah. That way you can, at least one of us can go then. <laughs> hey, Sparky, take all the money from those engines and invest it in Fox 35s. No. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Hey, Sparky, what are those holes in your corner of your bench for? And you're right there in front of you. What are those holes for? Camera pole. Okay. Pull of a camera in there. Very cool. Except if I didn't like it. Okay, these two are spoken for. I didn't think I was going to sell these, but whatever. Not a problem. We'll play with them. Got to watch what you bring out in front of us, Sparky. I got some, uh, <clears throat> got to see if I got a 40 case. So I guess Hangout's paid for Sparky tonight. <laughs> Sparky's going to be going into his dumpster of, of engines and pulling them all out pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a McCoy 40 case. It, you know the smooth the smooth case, but this thing's worn out. In the garage, I got a series 21 40 piston and liner that's brand new. Well, see what I have, Sparky. I have a brand new tester 40, and that's what I was going to do. Is, is what kind of 40? A tester's McCoy 40. Tester's McCoy. Yeah. But, the series twenty one, the big the big case one, right? Yeah, yeah. 
It's brand new. That's why he wanted that lightning bolt. Oh, you were gonna make you were gonna make one of those motors out of this engine, so you're telling me I don't have to do it. Well, if you want to do it for me for fifty bucks, that's great. No, I'm no just you're saying, paying. Yeah, I just send you a worn out engine for twenty five. <laughs> My God, those testers' engines were butt ugly. Butt heavy too. I'll yeah. tell you what, I got I got two forties. I'll send you both of them. Okay. Are they both the lightning bolt ones? This is a lightning bolt. Okay. The problem, the problem with this one is, is it's the it's the RC model, but that's good because you can put a Venturi in there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Perfect. Send Perfect. It. Yeah, you send them both to me. I'll make I'll make something out of them. But you know, I'd rather not. I got one series twenty one that's brand new in the box, and I'd rather not tear it apart if I don't have to. Well, what did you want for the for the good one, the new one? Um. Uh, This one here, oh man, I got it. I don't even have it in the garage. I got it right here in my hands. Okay, this is this one here is a thirty-five, and this one here is a forty. Yeah, well, I have the brand new forty. Yeah, this is a this is a brand new forty right here. Yeah, well, I already have that. I yeah. need the old, the this is old a brand new stuff. 40 as well, Sparky. What's that? He has a brand new 40 as well. He just wants the lightning bolt to make okay. a, a motor out of, to make that one of those good motors out of. Yeah. Yeah, no, I have those. This one here is a 35 brand new case the uh, box is kind of crappy but you know tom at this rate you're gonna be owing one heck of a good bottle of whiskey for whoever's bringing it back up for you and from burrack with all this stuff uh stewart's not on is he <laughs> no he hasn't come on yet tonight yeah good i don't want him to hear that <laughs> I've, I've got his addy i'll, I'll let him know <laughs> oh, so you're going to send me ninety dollars for these two engines here, right, Len? That's yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Along with that ninety dollars, send uh, forty bucks for these two. So All right, that's fine. Four engines. Yep. Yeah, Not a problem. problem. There's another thing with this case. I don't know if that's factory or not. I never. Saw that you see the splits in the front there? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Can you turn it around, Sparky, so I can see the lightning bolt on. Where's the lightning bolt? The dark this one is, with the red this head. Is a smooth case. Okay. And this one here is a lightning bolt. Yeah, well, it's got to be the lightning bolt uh, case that I need, eh? No. <laughs> no, those, those uh, Series 21 will go in this case, too. Oh, okay, okay. They're both they're both forties. You can't put them in a thirty-five, but these are oh, both. I know 40s. that. I know that. I always thought you had to have the lightning bolt one. No. These okay. are these parts are interchangeable. Okay. Okay. And I'm I'm missing three screws that hold the cylinder on on this one too. I just want to be up front with you what you're getting. Oh, Christ! It's getting cheaper by the minute. Yeah. You think? <laughs> <laughs> Those screws are what? Five dollars a pop? No. <laughs> okay, That's awesome, Sparky. For. Good enough. Thanks, Sparky. Yeah, no problem. We'll send you the 130. No problem. <clears throat> all right. I'll send you my address. Yeah. Just box it all up and put our name, put my name on it. All right, Thanks, and, and who, who's picking it up? Stuart? Stuart, yeah. Stuart's going to pick it up at Brodax.
Well, Stewart, is Brad the point going win? No, not that I know of. Does Stewart know he's going to be the delivery boy? Yeah, we already <laughs> told him. To him. <laughs> hey, Philip. Hey, thanks for coming yeah. in. Hey, man, guys, how are you? I, good, man. You're in the hospital. That's not, you're doing not as good as we are. What's going on? Ah, uh, well, had a little heart scare. No big deal. Well, it it, my wife deal. says it is a big deal. But anyway, I had a little heart scare. Had to have a calf today. And, and you have heart failure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're having a little, having a few little problems, but we'll be all right. Well, man, I really appreciate you coming in under these circumstances. Yeah. That's, man, that is pretty uh, heroic. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I don't know about heroic. I'm, I'm feeling a little better. I just, uh, just thought I'd come in and aggravate everybody a little bit. Hey, everybody. Hi, Vicky. How's it going, Vicky? I mean, I know how it's going, but hi, Vicky. Yeah. I tell you what, talk about a trooper. That woman, I've been in here since Wednesday, and she slept in these chairs in the hospital every night since Wednesday night so she could stay with me. I don't oh, know. That's awesome. That's... Her go home and get some sleep, and she won't do it. She's well, she knows you need to be there. Make sure you're getting taken care of right. Uh -huh. I'm going to do that. She's, I tell you what, she's tougher than I am by a long yeah. shot. Yeah, they uh, women are very, very tough. No doubt about it. I so, Philip, you we, we, you can tell, start uh, tell people that you're no longer heartless. <laughs> yeah, You've proven right. that you got one. <laughs> That's bad. I'll have to remember that one. I like that. It's pretty good. Uh, we've had a. It's it's been. Uh, I can't say it's been fun, but I've learned a lot this week. I can't eat salt anymore, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. Crap. Oh, if man. it tastes good, you can't have it. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. That's wow. one of the Yeah, but I gotta I gotta do what I gotta do to keep keep aggravating you guys. Hey, be Philip, I've been through it. Twigs. Do what? I've been through this same thing, Philip, or maybe not the same thing, but the hard stuff. Man. And uh yeah, you, that was 16, really 17 again. years ago. If you want to chat about it sometime, give me a call. Yeah. I tell you, I'd like I need to get your phone number. I tell you what, we got uh, the bad thing about it is I've been telling my doctor that the, the stuff I was taking for blood pressure didn't seem to be working, and nobody seemed to be listening. So I get over here, and they double. They I've taken four times what I started out taking, and my heart was just going crazy, and the blood pressure was crazy high. I mean, the nurse took my blood pressure when I first got here, and I thought she turned white. You, it, it was it was just not good. See, they got me to bed right quick and got me right in. I mean, I was ahead of people. They put me ahead of people, put me in the emergency room. And then, uh, anyway, they, they gave me some different stuff and finally got it where I can heart rate. She said, I'm four points off perfect. Are you still there? Looks like everything disappeared. No, we're still here. We, we see oh, okay. you and we hear you. Everything disappeared. But, uh, it's it's fine now, but Joe. it's in no permanent damage. That's, they think I can get it back. It's just uh, I've weakened it up considerable, letting it work so hard for so long. But I think we got it straightened out. I feel like we're we're on the short rows now, getting getting back to normal. But uh, I just just got to where I was so lethargic. I just didn't want to do anything. Didn't want to work on the planes. Didn't want to do anything. And uh, I figure it's time to do something. So we came over and got checked out. And guess what? Guys, if you start feeling bad, go get checked out because there's, there's people downstairs that didn't in time and they're in heap of trouble now. Yeah. Well, man, I'm just glad. I'm just so glad you're all right now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Philip, I just sent you my number. So call call sometime. Uh, when I'll you, do it. When I'll you're do better. it. I'll get, I'll get on. It's in the chat box. Get back to the call. I don't know. Put it up again so I take a picture because I'm on my iPad and I don't know how to make this thing got show me the pictures. I used to do everything on this and I quit and I started using a computer at home. Now I don't remember how to use this thing, but yeah. I'll find yeah. it. Is it still I'll, there or do you want me to send it again? Try it. Send it again. I'll take a quick picture. Please sir. Will do. Hey Howard, thanks for coming in. How you doing, Howard? I'm doing okay. All Howard, right. did you get what I sent you? Yeah, I got it today, and uh, let's today. see. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to be here uh, 
Wednesday, but didn't make it. Uh, here's uh, oh, right cool. here. I, I'm taking some nibbles out of the spinner. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's do a subtract. Yeah. To uh, accommodate your air screw. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sounds cool. Yeah. Is that a back plate to a spinner? It's well, it's the uh, I'll, I'll, I'll rotate it. Um, the back spinner or the back of the spinner. If I know what I'm doing, I could do this. <laughs> there. Oh, wow. Very nice. You can see the. Uh, let's see, here's one in real life. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Oh, very nice. Well, very nice. we'll see. I, I'm fixing to, to print this and see if this one works. Okay. Are you going to print that? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I very nice. Too. I like um, that. Is that from uh, Thinkburst yeah. or is that your own design? Well, it's my own design. Cool. Cool. Philip's using this gargantuan air screw. Well, I uh, cut it down a little bit. Well, you, if, you yeah. get a, if you get a smaller one, the blades get so darn narrow that you don't move any air. So I just take that and cut it down to 11 three blade, 11 six three blade, and then it seems to work very well. It pulls good. Well, this, uh, it does, huh? Yeah, I, I bet. It, it, use this with an electric motor, huh? Yeah, I'm hoping to get. Uh, oh, I think I'm just, right. When I get home, I will check. I'll pull up the. I'm sure it'll be in the chat. It'll be in the. Where, are you in a hospital bed? Hey, do what? Are you in a hospital bed? Yeah. Well, I'm not in the bed right now. It's beside me. I had to get out of that thing. But uh, yeah. yeah, I'm in the hospital. I was supposed to get out tomorrow. They did the procedure today, so I was supposed to go home tomorrow. We'll see about seven o'clock in the morning. I don't understand. You're not going home till noon at least. You're well, anyway, you go in the hospital and you think you're going to get some rest between all this crap that beeps and all the things that honk and buzz and and then the people coming in every two hours to check on. Hey, you need waking you up. Hey, you need something to help you sleep. Don't you watch. Don't get no rest. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, you want to hear uh, boredom in a hospital when I was in for mine? <laughs> I was so bored that uh, I had my wife bring in a bottle of glue and I went around and fixed the laminate and their countertops and stuff <laughs> in the middle of the night because I was just <laughs> restless. Uh, that was before they built the whole new new uh, hospital section. But uh, oh yeah, the, I just went and borrowed tape, uh, patient tape, you know, whatever from the nurses and some rubbing alcohol to clean things off and I just did a bunch of repairs because I was just going stir crazy. Yeah, um, I thought I was going to go that far. I'm telling you, it's uh, I will say one thing that the, the, they're recruiting some really pretty nurses nowadays. I didn't know it was going to take me that long. I didn't know that. I didn't there, sorry. But it's been interesting. I have, uh, Oh, I like the looks of Sparky, but I can't eat that anymore. French fries, no. Nope. But I got a little dog. But I got a little dog to do backflips for him. Looks good, Sparky. Looks good, Sparky. I muted you uh, when your wife came in. I just muted you guys' conversation. There, this is not French fries. This is much muscacholi. Oh, I need that. That looks good. You don't put salt on that. Yeah, I got some salt right here. Oh no! Don't even, Sparky. Come on. <laughs> That's not fair. Where I can't that? use the stuff anymore. Huh. I usually have it right here. Oh, here it is. <laughs> oh, Sparky, yes. way like way like get you, Prodac. Literally putting you. salt on the wound, right, right, Philip? I'm gonna hurt you. Uh, eh. He's Literally killing you, Philip. He's I'm killing gonna you. Wait, I'm gonna wait till he's not looking, and I'm gonna take some of this lead sheet that I just found. We're we'll wrapping on his tail wheel. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got oh. two engines left for anybody that's interested. 
One's a brand new Evo 36, and the other's an FP40. Ooh, no. at Evo 36. Oh, I'm I'm so I'd love to have one of those, Sparky. Yeah, I would too, but I think the most got a uh, knew it was 150 bucks. One 159.99. And it's got everything in it. It's brand new. Damn. But it's got an extra piece. Wow. There's the remote needle valve and carburetor. I got rid of that. Wow. Yeah, you need to throw that away. And it's got a Jim Lee <laughs> Venturian spray bar in it. Nice. Nice. And these run good, too. Yeah, they do. Just got a no cast. They're a little heavy, but they run great. Use no cast for that motor. Run really nice. Just uh, synthetic. Synthetic yep. oil, but they... What'd you say, Tom? I say synthetic oil. That's what they need. I'm still I've not understanding you. I run. He said synthetic oil is what they need. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Then I got this is a used FP40, but it's in good shape. But no spray bar. Got a Jim Jim Lee Venturi in it. Got good compression, this motor. Nice. Yeah. I don't know what I, I think I, I got it listed for 50 bucks on the website. Take another motor. I got one to get home. How many forties? The Evo I got listed for a hundred. Nice. Any money? <laughs> nice. All right. Just want to remind everybody. Uh, please uh, hit the like button. That doesn't cost you anything. Please uh, like, share, subscribe. Don't forget the super thanks and the super chat. And um, don't forget our YouTube channel memberships. It's just uh, you can start with just a $4.99 uh, monthly donation. It's like going to Starbucks and getting a uh, one of their concoctions just once a month. And uh, I do it myself. We put a lot of effort into this program, into this channel. <laughs> We're down on views this month. We only got 15,000 views. Usually by now we got 21,000. And how many members do we have? Paying members or subscribers? Yeah. Uh, paying members. I think 49 or so. Not many. Yeah. So 49 people. Do you guys think that 49 people do 20,000 views a month? <laughs> no. So there's a lot of people that watch our show and uh, they, they, they feel fine not not supporting us. That's I think that's pretty bad myself personally. Forty nine members and we got twenty something thousand views. I would like to make one statement that Epon eight sixty two that I use, and I just talked to Danny about it. Now I I use gloves, but somehow I got a little bit on my my eyes, my, my one eye. It will make your eyelashes fall out. Yeah, that stuff's wow. brutal. Wow. So I hope they grow oh, back. Look at that. Stuff is brutal. It's very brutal. That's what Wendy was telling me. Stuff's brutal. Got formaldehyde in it. Have you talked to Wendy lately? I haven't, oh. no. Actually, I did, but not about not about anything important. No, I sent him some videos he was looking for. He wanted I some of his old videos back about the Texas trips and stuff, so I sent them back to him. I just yeah. For anybody that doesn't know, Wendy's been doing regular uh, control line videos and stuff. Uh, oh yeah, you know, they're maybe... awesome. He's been doing good. Good, yeah, they're good videos. Yeah, and his trains. Wow! So I think he's oh, getting yeah. a lot of his old loves back. You ever seen his video on his his uh, fish? Yes. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> and he the had two fish he had to turn right side up to feed them and they turn right back upside down I don't I don't begin to understand all I know about that but anyway what what the Those heck was the name fish. that they were called someone had nicknamed them something or other funny and I forget what it was do you remember Len What's that? The, those fish that, that somebody had, one of his friends had given him, given the fish a real nickname because they were so goofy the way they fed. I don't, rem I don't remember that. Are they that was on, on a couple of the videos. So they're about as went. big as they are. They're about as tall as they are long and they're darn near that wide. But they swim upside down. And Wendy would turn them right side up because they have to be right side up to feed. I thought, <laughs> Wendy, they didn't get that fat by not eating. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those koi fish were pretty pretty neat looking. Those koi were pretty. Did anyone see that, that video that his daughter put out on uh, uh, his bird when it after it died? His bird? Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen it. I know yeah, the one. It. Yeah, the that, one about that was Chicky, one yeah. a touching video, Chicky. I haven't yeah. seen that one. Yeah. He's he's got a feather from Chicky in the tip weight box of the of his tribute plane. Right. Yep, yeah, got chicky in there. Well, I'll tell you a weird one. I took a I took a fly a feather that came off oh, shoot. My love birds, one of them shed some feathers. And I'm tying flies now for fly fishing, trout. I tied a feather, supposed to be a dark, a light feather and a dark feather, and I took a blue one and a white one and put it on ostrich hurl, which is green, and made this fly, but I put three or four rounds of solder on it to wait it a little bit. He took it to the river and first cast caught a fish, second cast caught a fish, third cast caught a fish. Now I got everybody wanting to go to the pet stores and collect all the lovebird feathers. <laughs> caught four <laughs> fish on four casts, and in the fifth one, I should have retied, and I didn't. I lost the fly, but I can make more as soon as she shed, as soon as he shed some more feathers. But I thought, gum, I got to try this. Daggum, I've heard that. Hey, do you have videos time. of this, Philip, or is this just one of these fishing guy stories? <laughs> no, this one's a real one. I have pictures, I just don't have them here. But uh, the guys were asking me, that'll never catch fish, it's wrong color. So I, I said, Well, I'm gonna, you won't mind if I try it anyway. So I took and cast it out there. It was this it, big. No, they weren't that big. The biggest, <laughs> one, was, the biggest one was only 14 inches. Yeah, this big. Yeah, they were th they were at least this big. big, big yeah. They were that big. <laughs> yeah. The little the littlest one was uh I think nine and a half, but the biggest one was only fourteen. You uh, buddy, you're saying fourteen a inches and fourteen millimeters. Dang, a friend of mine come along with a dang woolly booger, Ricky went up there and put a woolly booger in the water and caught a twenty three inch trout right behind me. That just hmm. Hey Steve oh, Mitchella. Well. Come talk to me about model airplanes, no fishing. There you go. Uh -huh. Well, there the you fishing go. involves feathers. I know, and it's fly fishing. I understand. <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. I saw it. I know it didn't slip by. Fly fishing. <laughs> and talking about flying. I get this. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Steven, Mattel, what's up with you? How much, man? How you guys doing tonight? Doing, doing, doing good. Hope you are. I just got home a little tired. I had some flying today and then work afterwards. And I think Mr. Mr. Wright went to the Long Beach Grand Prix with a couple of other of the guys. But I had to I had to stay back from that and practice my flying and, and go to work. So I missed out on that. So what did you fly? What I flew the just flew the Spectre today. Steve, you're gonna have to quit using them cuss words on here. The Spectra. Four letter words. What model is the Spectra? I'm trying to remember that. It's like a. it's the one I flew in Vegas, the one I flew in Vegas. It's uh it looks a lot like a stiletto, but instead of round tips, it's got it's got square tips. Square it off tips. And they're oh, kind of okay. It's slowly Dang. coming to me. It's like a derringer. Oh. It's like a derringer with a, okay. with a stiletto tail with a stiletto rudder. Okay. Very good. So as far as I flying, think I think it's I think it's from the probably from about the eighties. 
I can't fly it in Super 70s because it's too, it's just a little bit too modern. I think they, I think Lynn Barnett built it in the 80s. Okay. It's about, it's about 40, about 40 something years old, probably. So as far as flying, what was you working on? Just the pattern. And what, what, what aspect, what parts? All parts. Really? All right. Bottoms, square corners, vertical eights, overhead eights, triangles. What are you having fun? I'm always having fun. Well, that's what matters. That's all that matters. Yeah. It's just, it just gets kind of frustrating sometimes because my arm, my arm, my right arm stopped working in November. So, you know, the airplane's easy to fly. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's gentle enough. It's not like my nobler where you gotta, you know, you gotta be mozzo baracho to, to give it control and, and hang on to it. It's going to pull you off your feet or nothing like that, but it, you know, my arm, I've never had a problem with my arms. My arms have always been strong and healthy, and I've always been able to lift a lot of weight and use my arms as I need them. And all of a sudden, the first week of November, after I come home from Las Vegas, my arms started to deteriorate and stop working. I can't lift the coffee cup up off the table and, and feed myself. I had to switch hands from right to left to use the fork and the spoon to feed my face. You know, I can hardly wipe my, you know what? with my right arm and just as, it as stupid as pain. it sounds go get yeah. checked go have your doctor check you oh yeah i've been seeing the doctor i've been been done through all that went and seen the ortho doctor he you know gave me the hand job run around and wouldn't even wouldn't even touch me wouldn't do this wouldn't do that i had to recommend an mri to go get an mri from him did he tell he you not quite that. sleeping on it what's that what, I sleep on my back. I don't. I don't. I yeah. can't sleep on my. I don't. I don't sleep on my side. I sleep on my back. You better ask your wife or your girlfriend or whatever to see if, at the middle of the night, if you're not rolled over with your sleeping on your arm. No, nah, I can't. I don't do that. I don't. I don't sleep sound enough at night. I get up every hour and a half, so I sleep on my back. Period. And the only only That's way I can sleep only way I can sleep on my arm is if I sleep curled up on the couch and I roll over on that side and put my face in the back <coughs> of the couch. St Steven, do you get a diagonal pain down your bicep from it? I get all kinds of, I got basically pins and needles, man. And, and it goes down to about my elbow from my shoulder to my elbow. And then from my yeah, elbow, a bit of my, what, you're, my, what you're saying sounds like when I had rotator cuff tear and I got the surgery for it and it's okay now. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what I, that's what I think it is because I, I don't know, but I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. All I know is I have a torn tendon in there at the, at the head of my bursar, whatever that is. And that's basically where the tendon attaches to the, at its attachment point, it's torn. Okay. Yeah, they went in on me and did that microsurgery, and uh -huh. I had both shoulders bu shoulders buggered up over time. One from a motorcycle accident, and one just from work. Yeah. And uh, you know, it wasn't a hundred percent recovery, but I got eighty or ninety percent back. Right, which is better better than what you had, right? Yeah. Well, I couldn't lift my arm. Yeah, that's that's kind of basically. That's almost just about where I'm at. You know what I mean? Sometimes I can't, you know, you can't lift your arm up. Yeah. Yeah. Get that, get that surgery. If it's offered to you, if that's what it is and you know, get like it over with. You, like when you try to reach behind the seat in the car and pick something up off the back seat and bring it forward. Yeah. It's nearly, it's nearly darn impossible. You know what I mean? It's like, Oh God, no, you know, you can't do it. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I, I feel it sometimes flying models. It'll uh, it'll get to me after, if I've been doing a, a lot of stressful stuff otherwise. Right. Uh, right. Just flying control line models, it'll uh, it'll start getting that pain sort of, like I say, diagonally across the bicep. Yeah. And uh, that just says back off uh, doing the other stuff so you can save your energy for flying models. Yeah, right. Basically, what yeah. mine did instead of the pain, it just kind of, it's like, 
it's like pins and needles and then it's like the whole bicep goes to sleep you know what i mean and i guess that's that's pain you know it, it just kind of goes i don't know it's weird yeah yeah and then they, they took an MRI of my upper neck and back and told me that my second and third and my fourth and fifth disc are oh, that's pretty a while ago. And I think your fourth and fifth disc, if there's anything pinched on your fourth and fifth disc, it will affect your, your right shoulder and your right arm. It will affect the, the movement of it. And you can't, if I read correctly, you can't lift things. You know what I mean? If you have a pinch there. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, enough Get about all that crap. I'm getting better. Doctor, I'll be all right. See a chiropractor. Yeah, I've been seeing the chiropractor. Actually, you know, I was in a car accident in October. On October 23rd, somebody ran into me and T-boned me. And it was their fault. They had no insurance, no license, no registration. They gave me a bunch of phony information. So my insurance company gave me like they gave me like 3500 bucks. They gave me 1500 bucks for my pain and suffering and then 2100 bucks to fix my car. All right. And they gave me a bunch of crap running around. When I took it to the body shop, they asked me to take it to the body shop, told me they wouldn't do the work on my car because it had pre-existing damage on the bumper. Take my car somewhere else. We won't do it. The insurance company told me to take that that estimate and go find a body shop on my own and get the car fixed with that estimate. And they would give me that money. I said, you know, what do I pay you guys for? What? Well, I don't want to do that. You guys sent me somewhere and they're telling me that they won't fix it now. OK. So anyways, long story short, I called a lawyer and the lawyer set me up with this and this and that and sent me to the chiropractor and, you know, had me checked out, get me MRIs and blah, 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 and probably squeeze the insurance for a little bit more juice. You know what I mean? Instead of what they gave me. So we'll see. And hopefully- hey guys, let me let me uh, share something with you guys uh, that I discovered this week. Uh, can you guys see this? Yes. All mm -hmm. right. So. Um, you know, it's really small, but it can hold your airplanes. It can hold your airplanes oh, yeah. off the bench. It's normally used for guitars. It's um, uh -huh. and it has different angles, so you can move this thing different different positions, and you get different angles and hold your plane. I've just been loving it, and it's like they're like twenty bucks. Um, that beats the heck out of that metal cradle I bought. It was 60. yeah, it's it is really neat. It's different angles, different things, and uh, it's. it's um, you know, it's not that tall, like six inches tall at the max. And on the underside, you can't really see it, but um, it even even can hold your tools. Uh, there's a the, the bottom of it, which you can't see. There's like a, a, it's like in quads. And so you can put some tools in there. It's really neat. It's kind of a um, neoprene kind of material fill. So it won't move around on your bench. And it doesn't take up a lot of space. I mean, you know. Uh, the ones that Wendy have used and the ones I see that Sparky used, there wasn't, those are very good as well, but this is really compact. I bought mine at uh, Guitar Center and uh, Amazon sells them as well. They're 20 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I, I can't tell you, encourage you enough to check it out. It'd be neat to even have it at the field. You know, when you're at the field, sometimes you want to put the plane down on his, on his back. It'd be great for that. Or maybe great some, idea. Or to maybe maybe keep your runner off the, off the ground when you're working on it, you know. Um, Neat idea, y'all. Yeah, I was um, how I came across this was I uh, took my son to get his guitar worked on, and the uh, what do you call those guys that work on guitars? Lutherans? What do you call them? Lutherans? Or there's like a Luther name to them. The guy Luthier. Luthier. I don't know what you're saying, but I can't. Think yeah. Of so the Luthier guitar mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> the luthier had one of these actually had two of these and i was thinking that is something i'm always looking at things for model airplanes right it's always on my mind and um and i and he said that they sell them and they were out of stock at that time but i went back there the next week later and i bought i bought it and i got it this week really neat little item so i highly recommend uh you guys getting it 20 bucks you know Probably the last the idea. idea. What was that, Stephen? I said, I think I'm going to have to get one of those. Very neat. Yeah. And that that music stand that's Spark, uh, second hand store, got it for only a couple. 
You're breaking up, it. Bob. You're you're breaking up. Oh, that uh, that guitar. No, not working. Yeah, I've got. <laughs> you're breaking up, uh, Bob. I don't know why it's we're getting every other syllable and not getting everything you say. Okay, I moved closer. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. I can hear yeah. you. Anyway, uh, that guitar stand that Sparky was using, or not guitar stand, but uh, piano. You still oh, breaking okay. up, Bob? Okay, I'll go out and come back in. All right. Sounds good. Hey, anybody in the audience, uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, put them in the chat box. We'll do our best to give you a straight, <laughs> the straight and right answer. Might not be the only way to do it, but it'd be a way that uh, we've been successful doing it. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Where's everybody buying horns right now? Flapping elevator horns. I don't know. Somebody's building? Come on, guys. Somebody's got to be building. Hokies, Hokies delivered some to me in a matter of a couple of weeks. Well, you were lucky. I've had some order for over a year. That I yeah, paid me too, for. but that's last year, but this was just recently, so. Well, I'll call him when I get home then. Does Brodak sell them? Uh, not with the adjuster piece like I want. Okay. Uh, uh, Tom Morse designed it, and it used to, I mean, you used to get them from, from Oki Air in just a few days. But I got an order from him a year ago now, and uh, I got a lot. I got several pieces in. It sent me a lot of it, but it, I didn't get – I think I don't don't hold me to it, but I think it's two flap horns and two elevator horns, and then a little brass block. That right. Right. I didn't get any of that, so that's forty or fifty. It's there's either four or six of them. I think it's four, but anyway, it's, that's about fifty bucks worth of parts that I didn't get, and I haven't heard anything from him. When I call him, I can't get him to answer the phone, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, me too. I don't know what's going on. I mean, I've, other people tell me they're getting stuff. So I don't know what I did to tick him off, <laughs> or or just what the deal is. But you know, I, I think my money spends as good as anybody's. And yeah, I'm already is that okay? Yeah. Well, I don't know what's going on. How I'm gonna it? try him one more time because he's got beautiful stuff when you can get it. Yeah. But, uh, I need that and another. I was going to get another uh, timer and a couple more ESCs. And I just, I don't know. I'll try again. I think the timer you can get, you can get straight from um, the source. Be ready. Will Huben. Will Huben. He wants the, uh, he wants the uh, Federati uh, Fiori timer. Yeah. In the, uh, yeah, spin. Um, I mean, I've seen them on uh, on the internet on uh, the source, the manufacturer. Well, I'll give it. I'll look up. <coughs> I look for them then, because I want to get one of those. And then this summer, when we go to the Nats, I'm hoping uh, Igor will bring some stuff with him. I'm gonna pick up three of his systems. You know, two to nice. use, and one for spare. I have a comment from uh, Stephen Smith. He says. Phil, looks like you are in the hospital. What's it's what's up? Uh, a little heart scare. And then uh, Marcel scare. Legrand says, "Get well soon, Phil." Thank and you. Steven, Appreciate Steven it. Stephen Smith said, "I recently ordered two handles and an electric motor mount from Oki Air. Got them within two weeks." Yeah, you know what? Okay, Phil, I'll figure. I can't want to get home. Phil, you guys stop. Uh, okay. Go ahead. You got to stop pissing people off, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bad oh. boy. Phil, I sent you a second uh, uh, yeah, private I'll chat there. I'll get it when I get home. I can't. Uh, yeah. It disappears before I can get a picture, but it'll be online. Gotcha. So I'll get it when I get home. If not, just, just PM me through Stunt Hanger. Okay. I can do that. I can do that. Mm. I'm tickled to see Lynn's on here tonight, and he's awake. <laughs> wide awake. See, I got to work tomorrow, and here I am <laughs> wide awake. On days when I don't have to work, I'll be fast asleep. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, th I thought you'd retired, Len. Ah, uh, semi. Uh, you work about 15 hours a week. You got to pay for that glow fuel somehow, huh? Yeah. Something to do something. with the work eat correlation, huh, Len? You know what? The the work I do is pushing grocery carts around a parking lot. What it does is keeps my heart in good shape. That's I yeah. your last name, okay. Len. See, I, I did the heart attack thing, too, back in 2017. Oh, well, so I don't know. It keeps my ticker in good shape. I, I didn't even notice you were in the hospital. I'm sorry. What are you That's doing? How do you spell your last name? What are you, what are you doing in the hospital? Morel, B-O-U-R-E-L. Yeah, it's uh, it, it it's real. Get that sparky. Yeah, I think so. Okay. B o u r e l. That's it. Leonardo. <laughs> and message. We have any questions or comments in the chat box? Go ahead and type in there. Put a question in there or comment. You want to, if you want to let, let us know where you're where you're watching this from, that'd be interesting too. We have uh let me see here. We have like uh 28 viewers, 26 likes. If you haven't hit the like button, please smash that like button. How's the bear cat coming? You asking me, Phil? Yeah. Mark, you and I are the only ones that build those darn things. <laughs> just got the fuselage formers today there you go cool where are you getting them from who's doing your laser cut brian malin oh, i gotta talk to him he does pretty work yes he does and he does it quickly and he's a good guy to work with I'll have to find him. I don't know him, but I'll, I'll have to get to know him. I don't think he's very far from you. Well, that's good. That station C looks like some really nice wood. What'd you say? That station C there in the picture looks like some really nice wood. Well, the some of these are laminated. C is laminated. Mm-hmm. What happened here? Where'd I go? There. There you go. So A yeah. and B are one eighth inch plywood. Right. And yeah. Brian had a lot of trouble with that. He had to go over it like four times to go get it all the way through. Up. Okay. Any cookies but, um, cookies, C no. through H are laminated one thirty second plywood. And three thirty second balsa. Yeah, that's the way Al did the original. Yeah, and then the last two here are all balsa. Yeah. yeah. So. So it's the same construction as he did on the Sea <laughs> Fury. Oh. Yep. Yeah, I still want to build one of those. Yeah, I haven't forgotten about it, Phil. I just haven't been in to get oh, the copies made. I'm, as you can see, I'm not. I'm not going to. You're be not in a hurry. Major. For it. Yeah. No, I'm not going to be in a big hurry for it because I can't do nothing with it right now. I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm going to have them put into a PDF, which is probably the easiest for you, and then you can work from there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, I'll tell you what. Go ahead. Sparky, I'll send you that money this week, and then uh, you just bring the stuff to Brodax. You're going to send it with the mold, right? Yeah, I'll send it with the mold. Same time. You got Appreciate it. it. I'll, uh... You got it. It's already set aside four engines for you guys. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to shut down, uh, Charles. All right. Hey, thanks tomorrow. for coming in, Bob. I appreciate it. So, catch Thank you later. You, good luck, everybody. Have a good weekend flying, uh, except right, for, uh, uh, you know, the ones who are covered in snow. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Somebody okay. still got snow. Golly. We don't up here, but uh, they do in, do in, where is that, Colorado? Yep. Yeah. You still got snow, Mark? Yeah, Phil, look, look here. Golly. 
That is incredible. I'll tell you what, but their winters are sure nice. I mean, summers are sure nice. You go up there and it's 20 degrees cooler than it is here. And the, oh, I love Colorado summers. I'll pass. <laughs> Too cold. No, it's, it's, there you go, Phil. Oh, yeah. How's that? Oh my gosh. Oh my that was that was yesterday. And then we're supposed to get another two to four inches tonight. Oh my so, goodness. We had really <laughs> nice flying weather last week, but it went away. So Yeah. <laughs> That's the way our whole spring has been, man. It, 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 it's yeah, either that? raining or it's blowing like crazy. As Lynn would say, blowing a hooli. Oh, Put the skis on it. 80, 87 degrees here today. Of course, I haven't seen outside except through the window, but it's uh, it was a beautiful hot day here today. Guys are going flying in the morning. I said, if I get discharged in time, I'll come by the field. We'll not have an airplane, but I'll come by the field. All right. It was 62 here today, 59 tomorrow. Wow. Keep that cold weather. You keep sending it east, <laughs> east, and we don't want it. 62 is not bad. Well, 62 is shirt sleeve weather. That's not too bad. Shit. 62 is freezing. No. Well, yeah. maybe there. It depends on the humidity. Here, it's been beautiful this year. I've it been will surprised. be nice until the following Saturday. It'll be 82. And Sunday will oh, yeah. be 79. Yeah. It's, it's the way it's been. If, if you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes. It'll change. <laughs> hey guys looks like we have come to the end uh when we start talking about fly fishing and the weather and all kinds oh. of stuff so i'm gonna uh end the live stream we can continue on in the after party hey thank you so much for tuning in if you're watching this as a replay um you know come in in the live channel come in during the live stream i do it every monday and friday evening starting at 6 45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and the link is posted in Stunhanger form under At The Bench. And uh, so hope you have a chance to do some flying or work in your shop this weekend and come back Monday and tell us all about it. 